going to show you how to make an oven mitt for your kitchen. To start off, you're going to want to print your pattern. This is available for free on my website. Just follow the link in the description. It's going to print on two pages. So um, you're going to trim off this dashed line here. It's about a half inch, so it'll be extra. And make sure you've printed it at 100% or do not scale so that you get the right size. Um, so I'm just using a, an exacto knife to trim that. This one inch box will help you know if you printed it correctly. So if you didn't, that will not be an inch. Um, now tape the pages together here. And then cut out your pattern piece. Now we're going to use the pattern piece to cut out two layers of main fabric and two layers from our lining fabric. We want them to be mirror image of each other, so for each fabric, if you cut it on the fold, one will be facing one way and one the other way. After you've cut your fabric, Cut two pieces of batting that is just a little bit bigger than your fabric. We're actually going to use four layers of batting to make this a little bit extra protective. So, but we'll start with one side, one piece of fabric, and two layers of batting. And instead of cutting out the batting with a pattern piece, I like to do it this way so that it doesn't stretch in a different direction than the fabric. So we'll sew it together, and that way it'll all hold together and be and then we'll trim the excess so we're going to quilt this um, oven mitt and you can use any pattern you you want i like to do a little grid uh, so i'll top stitch lines going in one direction and then i'll do lines going perpendicular to make a grid i like to use a fabric marker to draw these on you can also use a creasing tool if you prefer or chalk so draw all your lines and then go over them with stitching. So I did a two inch grid and if you want, you can put a couple of pins in to hold it while you sew the stitching. So sew up all these. After you've traced all those lines with quilting stitches, um, we are going to trim around the edges. Uh, the purple ink from my marker will dissolve in, in the air. It's an air dissolvable marker, so don't worry about those. Um, some are water dissolvable, but usually the purple is will dissipate in the air. It takes hours or maybe a, overnight. It should be gone tomorrow. So trim your oven mitt pattern. And then you have one side. We're going to repeat that same process with the other side. And this is mirror image. So these will be the outside of the oven mitt. When both your layers are quilted, we're going to pin them together, the right sides together, and sew them. Our seam allowance for this is 3 8 inch. So we're going to pin around the outside edges. And one thing to note is that we are going to sew into the thumb to give it shape, but the seam allowance there is not the same. So after you've pinned your project, what I like to do is lay my pattern piece on top of my fabric and batting and put a pin at the dot and then a couple more pins along the seam allowance. So this seam allowance line is where we're going to sew. And then this line right here is the cutting line, so we'll cut into it there. So I'll put those pins in and then kind of lift them up and mark where those pins are. So this is where the dot is, right here. You can kind of take it out too. So there's my dot, and then we're going to want to draw the seam allowance just to help us out here. And if you even want to, um, draw the whole line. You can trim off this part of the pattern piece and then use this to 
as a template to trace. This is where we're gonna sew. And that'll give you kind of a good line there to follow. So pin around the other mitt and then sew it at 3 8 inch. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the lining fabrics right side together. And we'll draw the thumb on there as well. After you've sewn both of those together, we're going to clip into the thumb of the seam allowance here. So you want to clip pretty close to that dot on the pattern piece. And just be careful not to clip past your stitching. I'm going to turn it over so you can see it a little better. Just about right there. And then we're going to trim off the seam allowance uh, down to about an eighth of an inch, I mean a quarter inch along the curves of the thumb and the hand piece clip into the seam allowance but don't go past that stitching. This will give you a nicer shape when you turn it. I like to use the tip of my scissors so that I don't cross the stitching even though it's really tempting to use the back of your scissors. I just always end up going through that stitching. So we'll trim here and then clip along the top edges. You don't really need to clip your lining much beyond the thumb piece because it'll it's a pretty thick project and the bulk won't bother the uh, way it looks. So, all right, so finish clipping that and then turn your main piece right side out. Okay, so when you have your oven mitt all ready to go, turn it right side out, and then um, we're going to push the lining. Leave that inside out. I like to just put it on my hand and stick it in to the main, main layers. And just get it all in there. We're going to line up the bottom edges. So the seam allowances should line up here. And then you can pull the fabric across to be the same width. So just smooth it out, pin around. So we are going to bind this bottom part with binding or bias tape. And then I'm going to show you how to make a loop with the tape so that you can hang your oven mitt in your kitchen. So the first step is to pin around and to keep your layers where you want them. Just go ahead and base around. Okay, so I made my own binding and this is just a two inch strip of fabric folded in quarters. So fold the two long edges in a half inch and then fold it in half. And that is the perfect binding for this project. Um, so I'm just gonna trim off the edge here. And then if you want to use sewing clips, you can for this part. I love these little wonder clips, I think. Uh, these are great for binding. Okay, so I'm going to start. So I want my loop to be back here in the back of the oven mitt. So I'm going to start my binding um, right about a little past that seam allowance, or the seam, the center seam. And I'm just going to clip it on here to hold it. There are a few different ways to do binding, but I'm just doing this sandwich method where you sandwich the binding around your project. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew it on most of the way, but at the back where I, when I get close to where I started, we're gonna do a little loop and I'll show you how to do that. 
so once I hit this last pin, I'm going to stop sewing, and then we're going to come back and make the loop kind of like that. So sew around. You want to sew fairly close to the fold, but you want to make sure you're catching the other side of the binding as well. So probably about 3 eighths inch from the bottom edge. Okay, so I've sewn that binding on and I have a bunch left. So I'm going to clip it about six inches past where it meets the other end of the binding. And then for this part from about here to here, I'm going to top stitch that binding closed so it's shut. Okay, now this part's kind of tricky, so that's why a video is good. So I've closed off a lot of that tail. Um, if you find that you've closed off too much, we can unpick it. So what you're going to do is circle it back around to create a loop. And then we want to hold it kind of right there. And then finish the binding at the same time while we squeeze that little piece into the binding seam. So like I said, if you have closed off too much of that binding, you can unpick it. Um, but that's the look we're going for. So I'm going to sew, catching all of that in into one piece. And another thing you can do to make this a little easier is trim off this side at an angle because it's going to hit the binding like that. So that'll make it a little bit easier to squeeze it in there. And then you're going to want to smooth out this part as much as you can. Okay, so now I'm going to clip that and sew it on. So I'm going to make sure it looks good on the inside too. Okay, so, whoop. So now we're going to finish that seam, that top stitching from here to here, and then I'm going to stitch down to hold it. Okay, after you've done that, you are finished. I'm just going to show you where I back stitched down here a little bit to hold it, and now that can be your hanging tab, and your oven mitt is ready to go.